Good morning. Good morning, everybody. All right, I think, how is everybody's evening? Everybody get some rest. Ready to learn some fun stuff today, this morning. All right. Okay. Volume is working. That's the, that's the good thing. <laughs> oh, yes. It's chilly, no doubt about it, but I don't have, we don't have any snow but we just have the cold. I'd much rather have the cold and the snow together. I'm gonna be this cold. I want it to be white out on the ground. But you know, I can't have everything. I live in the wrong place to get snow. Good morning, everybody. Welcome. Welcome to our final virtual breakfast club of 2020. I'm not gonna bother you the day after Christmas. <laughs> <clears throat> with education, you'll be snug and warm, relaxing at home, maybe cleaning up the um, Christmas aftermath. But I hope to still be in bed this time next Sunday. So <laughs> I doubt it will happen, but certainly going to try to uh, sleep in. All right, good morning. So today I am going to teach you a little trick. We have the ability on our sewing machines. Now again, I'm gonna talk specifically about Bernina, okay? Um, just in terms of stitch numbers and things like that. But there are these, this technique can also be applied to other brands of machines. Uh, you just have to find the right stitch. They all pretty much work the same um, across the board. We just have to find the right setting and stitch for your particular machine. So you'll be able to see here what's going on and then look at your machine and look in your manual and things along that lines. But like I said, the screens are going to be specific for, to Bernina, but um, I'm sure other brands have it. Like I said last night, I'm pretty sure Janome's have it um, and doing some research and things like that, trying to find who has what for people to be able to answer questions. I came across across Janome. So um, if Janome has it, then I'm sure that Viking and um, Baby Lock and all of them, it is not a Bernina exclusive stitch or feature. Um, so, all right, so let's get started. So, how is it possible to even be able to get the look of hand quilting without ever threading a hand needle? Okay, because we all know that the word hand for most of us sewers and quilters is like a four letter word in our vocabulary. And it's really not um, something that we enjoy doing. And we do have, the, but we like the look of hand quilting, but we don't like doing it. Um, <clears throat> so we have on our machines a stitch and you may look, have looked at the stitch and sewn the stitch and not really understood what it did because if you don't do certain settings, um, it's not gonna look like what you're looking at in this image, okay? So the picture that you're seeing here, well, was done by sewing machine. Okay, I know it's so exciting. Um, so how is it? What's the secret? Well, the first secret is let's get the right stitch on your machine. 
And the second secret is let's get the right thread on the top of the machine, okay? So this technique is typically, if you uh, research or look for it out there, uh, is typically done with invisible thread. I'm not a huge fan of invisible thread, okay? Um, if I am going to use invisible thread, I prefer the monopoly from Superior. Um, I like the uh, polyester portion of the um, invisible because uh, everybody else's is, is nylon. And if it's an item that you're going to be washing and drying and things like that, nylon can um, wear and uh, get, if it's too hot, it gets too hot, it can break and things along that line. So I like the polyester portion of the um, uh, clear invisible thread. But we can also do this, th this technique with 60 weight to 80 weight thread, okay? So today I'm using a bottom line, okay? So many of you quilters may not have any bottom line. You may have some 60 weight bobbin thread. You may even have some 80 weight thread that you use for um, hand applique with that you can use or, in, or even English paper piecing because those are the weights that I would use with English paper piecing. Um, I'm using bottom line. My machine embroiderers probably have bottom line in their stash because this is what we use for um, machine embroidery bobbin. So in the bob, in the needle of my machine, I am putting one of these two threads, okay? So with that being said, you also need to put the appropriate needle size for those particular threads, okay? And um, so they're not gonna be your normal because your 60 to 80 weight thread is much thinner and finer than what you're going to find that you use to piece with. So that size 80 needle um, is going to, um, be a little big, it may work fine, but I would definitely size down to a 75 or even a 70 um, needle when I was in doing this technique. Now in my, um, so let's get ourselves set up. We're going to wind a bobbin of thread that you want to see, okay? You're gonna wind the bobbin in the color that you want to see on the top of your quilt to look like the quilting stitch. Okay, so in my bobbin today, I have um, pink isocord thread. Okay, and the reason I'm using isocord is because bottom line is polyester. So I'm using a polyester on top and polyester in the bobbin. Okay, so if you use the same um, fibers, you will have um, better results. So if I was using 80 weight cotton in my bobbin, you could use, I mean, if I was using 80 weight cotton on top of the machine. In my bobbin, I could do 50 to 40 weight um, cotton, okay? But I don't want to mix cotton and poly unless it's monofilament thread that you're using, okay? You would thread the machine, um, thread the bobbin like normal, okay? And I say that for my eight series owners, do not thread the embroidery um, latch for my um, 200, 730, 630, 640, 580 owners, um, use your standard sewing bobbin. Uh, no gold bobbins, okay? This is standard bobbin. You're gonna thread your needle, okay? With making sure that you have the right size needle again with either the monofilament or the 60 weight thread that matches the quilt top color, okay? So if you have a multicolored quilt top, then you probably want to lean more towards monofilament thread. But if you're going to quilt like a um, square within that area or a border um, that's somewhat neutral colored, you can um, match your thread to your background color. So today I have a piece of white thread, a piece of white thread. I have a quilt sandwich, small quilt sandwich of um, white fabric. So I have white bottom line threaded through the eye of a 75 uh, quilting needle is what I put in. And then in my bobbin, I have pink isocord thread. Now on your uh, machine, 
in the quilt menu, and I'm going to switch to a machine here in a minute, and I'll switch to a screen. Um, so if you have a current uh, Bernina, classic Bernina machine, so touch screen, okay, and you have that, those tab systems running down the side of your screen that, you know, so practical, decorative, things like that, and you usually have one that looks like a quilt block, okay, that is going to be your quilting stitches, and this is where you're going to find your mock hand quilting stitch. Okay, it's in the 1300 menu. Okay. Now, <clears throat> so for example, here on this screen, now it's an 880 that's showing here, but this applies to any machine that looks similar to this. So even the 830, my 750s, all of that 780s, 790s. So over on the uh, right hand side, you see the picture of the little quilt right above the heart. So we would touch that tab. And then we would then touch the um, 1328 would be the, that stitch. Okay, so that's the stitch that is the mock hand quilting stitch. Now, um, don't worry. I found that I have stitch numbers for all, almost all of the Berninas. Okay, I did do some research. I don't have access to all of them here in my collection per se. Um, but here is a little chart that shows you all the way pretty much back to my Activa 135s, 145s. I'm pretty sure um, like the 155s may have it, uh, 153s may have it. I just didn't um, have one here to, um, I didn't have a manual here to look. So here's your stitch numbers. So even if you don't know what stitch number um, or where to find that stitch number, you know, you have your magnifying glass up at the top that you can use to search with. Okay. So if you don't see your machine number listed here in Bernina in the Bernina um, chart here, um, on the right here are images of what they will the graphics will kind of look like. Um, typically, the the one on the left is what you would see on a Bernina machine, and the one on the right is what we um, is the graphic that you, is used in the Burnett machines, and um, even some other brands. That seems to be a pretty universal um, graphic in terms of the stitch. And you're like, you're probably thinking, what the heck is that, and why, and how is it going to do what I do? But the machine actually it it does a triple stitch per se in a particular area. Um, with a higher tension, and that's what pulls the bobbin thread up. You can also look in your owner's manual. So in your owner's manual for um, pretty much at least all the Bernina machines I looked at yesterday, there is a section under the quilting uh, stitches portion of the owner's manual that talks about this hand look quilting stitch, okay? Gives you a suggested foot. It will also tell you stitch number, things along that lines and how you need to set yourself up, okay? Once you have your stitch selected and you have your um, machine threaded, okay? So 60 weight or invisible in the top, your colored thread that you want to see on the top of your quilt in the bobbin. Now on machines that have self-adjusting and computerized tension, Okay, and those are my pretty much the machines that have touch screens. Okay, in the upper right hand corner, upper left hand corner, you see where it says 7.5 um, there, you are going to notice that when you come to this particular stitch, you're going to see that your increase of upper tension. Okay, we that happens and it's supposed to happen because we want the upper thread to pull harder on our bobbin to bring it to the top of the quilt, okay? 7.5 is the starting and it could be different depending upon the machine and where it's at and things like that. So if it comes up at a different number, it's not a big deal. Just on this particular machine, it's a 7.5. This is just gonna be a starting point. And before you do anything, Thing and jump right into your quilt, you're going to test this because you do have to make, you may have to make some adjustments based upon your fabric and batting and thread and things like that. But that'll be, that's normal to see happen. It needs to happen. 
for machines that have manual tension adjustments. So that's the dial right at the top of the machine, um, typically right where we um, would come down to start threading our machine. You see there's usually a dial, it's usually kind of right at four. Um, we will be turning that dial to a higher numbers as we do this. And you can turn it to like four and a half or five. And again, uh, when we get to the machine here in a minute, um, you will be able to test and figure out what it needs to be to get the stitch to look correct. Okay. All right. What feet do I use? You can use any foot. This stitch is only a straight stitch. You don't zigzag, you don't decorative stitch with it, straight stitch only. So as long as the foot is capable of a straight stitch, you can use it. Quarter inch feet, number ones, 34s, 39s, your walking foot, um, anything along that lines will work um, for a uh, this hand look quilting stitch. Straight stitch plates on your machines um, if you like. If you are wanting curved to do some curves and things like that, then I would look at using um, foot number 55, which is what you see in the image right here. This is the leather roller foot. You can use this foot to get some gentle curves easily with the um, stitch. You can also use your regular feet as well, but this just curves, moves a little bit smoother. If you want a complete circle, Okay, um, in, with this stitch, then you wanna look at number 83, that's your circular embroidery attachment that allows you to stitch stitches in circles. And you are going to be able to um, do this stitch with that particular foot, okay? All right, so let's go and look at the machine. Okay, let me... um turn the light off on the machine. Because I think you can see better. There it is. Look at that. Looks like it was hand quilted, doesn't it? But again, I didn't even thread a needle. Okay. Now, what we want um, to do is also make sure that we um, pull our bobbin thread up to the top, okay? Because we wanna have a good hold on our bobbin thread so it gets caught in the first stitch and the tension can be right. So you wanna pull your threads to the top. You want to kind of hold on to the upper and lower thread um, of the machine. Now I have selected stitch number um, 1328 and I'm sewing on an 880 here. I have um, increased the upper tension um, to 8.0. I think that works pretty well. I could probably even go to eight and a half um, if I wanted. I have, again, white bottom line in the needle and I have pink isocord in the top of the machine. And we're gonna start sewing. And you're gonna see that it kind of goes back and forth over itself. And it's that back pull when the machine steps backwards that is pulling your um, bobbin thread to the top. Now, the 1328, 1304, um, the standard uh, stitch that I put in that chart is going to give you about six stitches an inch. Okay. So, God, I just love this. Absolutely love this. I can't, I can't explain to you how much this, this brings happiness to my heart. Um, the stitch. Okay. Now, You'll notice on some of your machines and you're in those quilting menus, you are going to find you have a couple of other stitches in that menu that say some numbers next to them. So for example, let me pull up. Um, you may have one that says eight slash inch 
you may have one that says 10 slash inch, and then you may have one that says irregular. Now, not all machines have all of those, but you may have some depending upon um, your machine. The, um, those adjust, those stitches do the same technique, identical, okay? So upper thread, lower thread, increased tension. They're just going to increase or um, decrease the stitch length to give you the appropriate number of stitches an inch, okay? The irregular look one is if you wanna make it look like you were a beginner and not so exact, um, you get the irregular looking um, stitch. So that's what irregular is. The, um, I'm gonna, I gotta work on not saying that word so much. So let's look at, this is the 570, okay? Um, just so I can kind of um, walk you through it. The uh, quilt menu, and you'll see on the 570 that they're all pretty much right there together, okay? So 1304 is going to be, you know, kind of standard. You have one that 1305 that's going to give you six stitches an inch. 1306 is going to be eight. 1307 is 10. And 1308 is um, programmed to give you irregular. So if you look at your stitch lengths, they go down as you go smaller stitches, uh, more stitches per inch. I have a question about twin needle. We would have, I'd have to try it. I don't know why it wouldn't work, but the, the issue is gonna be the increased tension on the needles that you're gonna have to be careful, help um, really pin tuck your tuck. But um, I definitely probably need to be done slower. I haven't done it with anything but quilting. Uh, you could top stitch, yes, without a problem. You could top stitch with it as well. But you'll also notice that when you choose the stitch, the automatic tension adjusts at the top. That you also notice that as we go down to test and adjust from there, you can um, increase um all the way up to 10 you got to be careful going to that high because your thread a lot of that tension on that thread especially with cotton um you might find thread breakage in that aspect so um i have a little bit of troubleshooting for you um if you are trying to do it with a particular combination of thread and you've got your tension as high as it will hold up or and pleat it all the way meaning that it doesn't actually make a full stitch it just looks like a a little needle prick um there i'm going to uh, show you here in one second uh, what you can do okay so if you have questions please feel free to drop it in the comments um so yeah, so you have a variety of stitches depending upon your machine that does this particular technique. So here's your examples, your six, eight, 10, and their irregular look. Now note that the wrong side of the stitch is not going, is not going to look like the um, front of the project, okay? So it's, you know, the back side is not going to look like the front side if you really hand quilted it in real life. But the overall look there in the upper corner is um, showing you what the back side of the project looks like. Okay, a little bit thicker, bolder areas, and then a single stitch because remember you've got a triple and then a single and a triple and then a single. That's there. And then we have, um, I put a link there or um, a web address to the We All Sew blog. Um, we also.com that talks about this particular stitch and setup on the machine as well. Um, that's where I pulled most of my information from um, the Bernina blog. Okay. 
test, test, and test. So before you jump into your project, you're going to need to experiment with your thread uh, tensions, battings, things along that line. If your stitch is not forming correctly, okay, um, meaning that you're not getting your bobbin just isn't pulling up enough for you to get a full stitch and things along that lines. There could be a couple of different things. If you've got your tension as high as it will go, there's nothing you can do. What it basically means is that the, if you're using a thicker thread in your bobbin, that it's still not enough to pull that thicker thread to the top. So you may want to consider, and that's really what you're looking for and you want that thread and that's the look you want, you may wanna consider using a different bobbin case, okay? So we wanna go with a bobbin case that you can decrease the tension on, okay? Now, that means that you would have to adjust the screw on the bobbin case. That is the one screw that we tell you to never, ever, ever touch, okay? Because at the moment you start adjusting the tension on that bobbin case, and you think you know exactly where to put the screw at to get it back to being the right tension to do your regular sewing, it won't work, okay? Inevitably, you've done it on a Sunday afternoon and then you gotta wait till Monday um, to come see me so we can fix it. So I suggest purchasing another bobbin case and using, take the mark on it, paint on it, do something so that you know that's your bobbin case that you can experiment with. You can decrease the tension, you can increase the tension, um, that type of thing. But you just want to make sure that you have a standard bobbin case that you're ready to play with and then a not standard bobbin case. Now we don't want the, uh, we make red bobbin cases for the uh, seven, five and four series machines. Um, they are no tension bobbin cases. You don't really want a no tension bobbin case because we need some, we just don't need none. Um, and for my eight series owners, you, the one advantage to your machine and the bobbin cases built in is the fact that you can adjust your tension and be able to return back to sewing with no problems. So I'm going to show you here. Let's get the camera moved and readjusted. While I do that, <clears throat> do we have questions? No, everybody's quiet. Everybody's still eating breakfast, thinking. Okay. All right. For my eight series owners, so 820, 830, 880s. Um, when you open, and if you've ever paid attention to the picture on your door down here, there's a little red dot, okay? And that red dot is showing you the location of this little metal dot, okay? And so you have a tool. This is your multifunction tool. Okay, and this end is what we can use to, to tighten and loosen your bobbin. So what you do is you kind of hold on to your bobbin and you turn your hand wheel towards you, keeping the bobbin from wanting to swing back into the machine. We're kind of holding it up so that we can move this portion of the over top of that little screw. Okay, so I know that for my machine that if I want to return this to normal, this metal dot needs to be, a uh, metal screw here needs to be lined up with the white dot. But if my mark was, you know, over here on the right, then I would know that I need to be two clicks to the right of the white dot, okay? Um, yes, you can adjust the stitch length, okay? So you can play with the stitch length of the stitch um, I would test it and experiment and then make adjustments from there, okay? Because you may take a slightly different tension to do a longer stitch length. It may not need to be quite as high. So when you're ready to loosen, right? Tighty, lefty, loosey, okay? So 
you want to loosen your bobbin. You're going to put the this little end here goes right over top of that certain click. Okay. Click it a couple, you know, maybe two or three, close it up, test your stitch. Okay. See if you're getting a better result. Okay. When you're done, all you do is you turn your little, use your little tool to bring your uh, the location of your screw back in a line to the um, white dot in the appropriate location that your machine is labeled for. And then you can close your eyes. That setting and that adjustment is something that you can do for anything. You know, if you are um, embroidering and you're still getting upper uh, bobbin coming to the top, you can tighten your bobbin case tension, you can loosen it. Um, in 2021, we're going to have a lesson on bobbin work. And when we have bobbin work, we don't need any tension on the bobbin cases. And so we talk about that. So that is um, a little bit on for my eight series, how to adjust to further decrease your bobbin tension if you're not getting your stitch to look the way that it is. Okay. All right. Okay. Any other questions? Because that's mock hand quilting. It's pretty easy. Um, like I said, most of you probably didn't even know what that stitch was or have since so have sewn it, not realizing what it was supposed to do um, and that type of thing. And um, was like, what is this stitch? And it's pretty, you know, it's not very pretty um, when you stitch it with regular thread top and bobbin. Um, it's, I mean, it's pretty, but it's not. It doesn't look uh, normal um, here. Let's, uh, let me show. All right, so question about adjusting stitch length. So I'm gonna take my stitch length to, let's say a five. I've still got up at eight. I'm gonna pull my bottom thread up here. Maybe, let's just start sewing. There's a five, that's a stitch length of five. Um, it probably, it's not, there's what the back side looks like. It looks pretty good. I may not even need as tight of a tension on it that I um, need to, but you always wanna start on, um, it's hard to see, but that would be the first stitch. And you can see that it didn't really pull the bobbin up because it hadn't caught the bobbin yet. Uh, so that's why you want to hold on to your threads or start off in scrap and then work on to the um, project. Okay. Okay. So just as a review, my top thread on my machine is white bottom line. White 60 weight polyester is on the top. And my bobbin is a hot pink 40 weight um, Isocord, okay? You could do this with cotton. Um, you could do it with 80 weight cotton and on top 50 weight cotton in the bobbin. You could even do 40 weight in the bobbin. I'm using a 1D, okay? But you could use any uh, foot that allows you to straight stitch. You could use a walking foot, um, a clear foot, 20, your quarter inch feet, either one, okay? and that will give you that look, okay? With dual feed, without dual feed, this was, this was one that was done. Uh, I had 60 weight up top and I was trying to use, uh, I had 30 weight cotton in the bobbin. I was just trying to see and you couldn't get your tension increased high enough to get a um, consistent stitch, okay? 
but um, so there's so pretty and even prettier when you didn't have to do it by hand. All right. Well, that's what I have for you today. Short and sweet and easy. Um, you learned how to use a new stitch on your machine and uh, a couple of new stitches, depending upon the model that you may own. Um, but yeah, this is Monopoly. Okay. This is what I like to use um, for, this is my favorite polyester. I don't get a lot of breakage. I don't need a lot of, um, uh, don't have to do um, a lot of adjustments when I'm using it um, in terms of that. The R fill um, invisible is good too. It's just nylon. So I don't use this on a quilt. If I was doing a wall hanging or something that wasn't going to be washed uh, as much um, or ironed, uh, nylon. And then bottom line. We carry bottom line in like 24 different colors, okay? Um, all uh, basic, pretty much shades of the rainbow are here and it's all restocked. I think everything is here, but I don't know. There's three shades of white. I think there's one shade of white that isn't here, but um, they're all there. I'm using a Bernina 880 um, today, uh, but it works on any Bernina. Uh, sewing slower with monofilament. Um, with nylon monofilament, yes, I have found uh, not, you know, mock speed. Um, the monopoly, I can go a little bit faster because it is a little more heat resistant to stretching. Because what happens is as uh, it goes through the machine and the tension disc and stuff and it heats up, it stretches. And then when it gets to the stitch on the machine, that's where you usually get a lot of it relaxes, it breaks, uh, things along that line. So I, one, I don't like invisible thread in my bobbin, period, period. Don't do it. There are tricks and tips and techniques and people that do it all the time, but to me, it causes more gray hair and headache. Just on top is good. I don't need it in the bobbin. Um, but yeah, I usually do so uh, a little slower. But when I'm using monofilament, I'm usually doing a particular technique that I need to sew slow with, okay? Um, it, it, typically I would use monofilament, I use it for invisible machine applique. So again, the look of hand applique, but with machine stitching, whole nother lesson coming soon. Um, but, and then we use invisible thread for that. That's really the only time I don't I don't particularly care to quilt with it, um, but if I have to, I will. But I do use it, um, yeah. But yeah, exactly, Miss Kathy. It's it's available in way more colors and way easier. I think it's it's so much easier to use. Yes, this lesson, um, Breakfast Club will this lesson will move to YouTube um, as well as stay here on Facebook. But I do move them all over to YouTube because they're easier to find. Um, you know, in three months when you want to come back and find this lesson, there'll be another 12, 14 uh, breakfast clubs and they get buried in all the other Facebook um, videos. So I move everything over to um, YouTube because you can go to youtube.com backslash material girls quilt boutique all one word okay two girls one quilt um boutique and then um we have a playlist there that is breakfast club so all the breakfast clubs since we started have been moved over there so i appreciate it if you go like subscribe enjoy um everything and we'll be doing more I am working on getting all of my PowerPoints up um, online, uh, all my handouts and note sheets. We are, that's a, it's on the to-do list for 2021 or maybe while I'm on vacation. We'll see if I get bored because you know, I'm not good at sitting still. Um, so if I at least sit still, I can have a computer on my lap and I can upload. So I do have everything, all my notes and stuff and I am planning on getting them um, into a location um, for everything. 
Uh, this stitch can only be used on a straight stitch. So you're not gonna be able to button a blanket stitch with it um, or decorative stitches. It is straight stitch only, okay? All right. Well, I hope, since I forgot to tell everybody yesterday, I hope everybody has a wonderful holiday. Um, if we don't see you here in the store over the next few days, um, I'm sure I will pop in on Wednesday and um, give everybody a, um, a shout out and a reminder of <laughs> look what's new and came in, but you can't have till January. <laughs> so I hope everybody has a wonderful holiday, a great rest of the weekend, and hopefully you don't have to go out and shop on what we call um, Super Saturday, um, the last Saturday of um, shopping before Christmas. So well, you can come to the quilt store. Just don't go to the other places. Just come to the quilt store. Come see me. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me this morning. And I hope you have a wonderful holiday. And we will see you in 2021 with a whole new slew of lessons. Bye, everybody.